Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this month's webinar, which is all about flexible and hybrid working, the business case for introducing. So before we start, we would like to introduce ourselves. And for those of you who, in, who haven't joined any of our previous webinars, I'm Victoria Templeton, one of the HR Knowledge Managers here at HR Solutions. And I'm joined by Sue Watson, our Head of Client Services, who will be supporting in our polls and our question and answer session at the end. We've also supported this morning by Rebecca, so she'll be helping out in the background to deal with any technical issues should they arise. And because we have lots of you who have joined us today, we've had to place you all on mute. However, we do want to hear any questions that you may have. And so we will be taking questions at the end of the session. So please do let us know of any that you have, noting them in the question box that's available to you. So here's a quick guide to show you how you do that. So you'll have a GoToWebinar panel on your screen that should look something like this. So just please type your question in the question pane and we'll um, aim to read out as many as we can and answer those at the end of the webinar. We also want to make this session as interactive as we would normally do at our physical events. So we will be running several polls uh, during the session this morning. So when we have a poll, it will appear on your screen and you'll just select the answer that's appropriate for you. Please note though, to be able to participate in the polls, you will need to ensure your screen isn't in the full screen mode. Um, as for some technical reason, uh, GoToWebinar doesn't um, allow poll participation when you're in the full screen. So without further ado, let's begin on this morning's webinar. And I want to just run through what we'll be covering today. And first of all, in order to understand the business case for introducing flexible and hybrid working, we'll first look at what is meant by these phrases. After which I'll be clarifying the legal position as it stands now, but also how it could change in the future. And then we'll be moving on to looking at the business case. So first of all, consider the evidence for introducing it before we then think about how this can assist you in building that business case specific to your organization. And then we'll finish off considering what needs to be considered when planning on introducing any flexible or hybrid working before we end with taking uh, your questions. But before we get going, I want to just run a few polls at this point. And if I could just ask you, Sue, to call up the first poll, which is asking you to just describe your business as it currently is in regards to flexible and hybrid working. Okay, that's launched. Thank you. So um, how do you describe your business? Do you only operate what we have, uh, what we are required to under the flexible working regulations, or do you actively uh, encourage flexible and hybrid working? So I'll just wait a few moments. You there? <laughs> okay, shall we? Yeah. Close, close the voting Let's now and share the results. There we go. We've got seventy percent actually encouraged. Oh wow. it. Um, Yeah, it's quite high, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's very good. Yeah, and thirty percent operate, but it's when it's um, as part of a flexible working um, requirement. Yeah, request. And we we are getting lots of queries at the moment about flexible working and hybrid working so mm -hmm. I'm kind of mm -hmm. fit I guess <laughs> yeah. okay I'll thank you back to you yep so the second poll is yeah. about um what you think the challenges are for your business with flexible and hybrid working and on this one you can select as many that are um, as appropriate for you so um have a think and let me know what your uh, challenges are for your business Starting to come through now. Yep. Nearly there, we'll just give it another. Yep. Quite seconds. interesting results. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, I'll close the poll now and I'll share yep. the results with you. 
There we go. So 92% yeah. is the wow. impact on the And I can understand, you know, mm. that's quite a common query and challenge, especially when we get flexible working requests. You know, what does it mean, you know, for the wider team? And will it mean uh, other people wanting to do it and all that kind of thing, isn't it? So that's very mm. interesting. And there's still the concerns about not being able to, it's, it's kind of that remote managing, isn't mm. it? When, um, I guess we've all experienced it now if we hadn't experienced it before um, yeah. to a certain extent, depending on the uh, business that you run. So, yeah. Mm. OK, let me okay. hide that one. And, and then the yeah. final poll is all about what you think you'll be moving to in the future in terms of flexible hybrid um, working. So do you think you'll be looking at a balance between that remote working in the office, so hybrid? or 100% remote or continue as you are with the flexible working process and deal with requests that way. Okay, we're there now. I'll just close that one and share the results with you. There you go. Yeah. And probably uh, as expected, I guess, um, hybrid is very a, a, much a topical um, conversation at the moment, isn't it? And um, you read mm. a lot about it. So hybrid, that makes sense. Um, the 4% actually, you do hear of businesses actually, because of the pandemic, the pandemic has shown we can work remotely. We've got technology. And actually, there are some businesses that are questioning whether you need to have a central place of work so yeah. that's interesting the four percent mm, absolutely okay there's a number of uh, people who've got offices or had offices in mm. in london have, have actually moved to um, home-based all over the country and have actually closed their london office and and not yeah. and not even looking at going back yet and uh, considering whether to even even do mm. that so yeah it's uh, changing times. Okay, that's yeah. back over to you. <laughs> thank you. And thank you everybody for taking part in those polls. So let's get going. And first of all, what I want to do is just sort of uh, go through what we mean by flexible and hybrid working, because that will then help in articulating the business case for it. And flexible working um, is about allowing people or having different ways of working so your employees can um, have uh, employment that better suits their personal needs and circumstances and as you will know flexible working has been around for some time you know because we have been required by law to manage flexible working requests under the regulations and it can take many forms but essentially it's anything other than your typical full-time full-time core working hours the most obvious is your part-time hours, but then you've also got term time working, which are those hours worked over specific weeks of the year. This can be either full-time hours or part-time when the hours are worked. You then have job share, which is another form of part-time hours. And you could also have things like self-rostering, which is where employees select their chosen shift from a set schedule, or even compressed hours which is where somebody works their full-time hours, but over a shorter working week, which ultimately makes their working day just that little bit longer. But what do we mean by hybrid working? This is a fairly new label that's come about, and it is pretty much because of the pandemic. You know, we've seen in recent months how many employers have operated mixed between home or remote working with attendance in the workplace. And hybrid working can mean different things to different organisations. And really, it is for you to determine what is best suited to your business. And there are three main categories, I would say, in terms of defining uh, hybrid working. You know, first of all, we have it where remote is first, and that is where the role operates fully remotely. You know, so attendance in the main company premises will usually only be when the job requires that physical presence. You then have um, a setup where it's office, but with occasional uh, remote working. So the, uh, sorry, the other way around, where the employee attends the office occasionally, but the main location for working is remote. 
and with this you'd expect the frequency of their attendance to the company um, offices to be usually agreed with the employee's manager and then you have office first but remote is allowed and so the primary place of working is your company's premises but the remote working is allowed and again like the one previously the frequency of that is usually agreed with the employer's manager but what about the legal position what's the legal case for um, you know building that business case so the statutory right uh, for an employee is to ask for flexible working but they must have that 20 weeks 26 weeks continuous service with the business in order to request that flexible working and what we're probably going to be seeing a lot more now is when you do get requests coming through actually you're probably going to be seeing requests for hybrid working um, which is something new typically flexible working was like your part-time hours compressed hours etc so now you might start seeing those requests talk about hybrid working and it is a right to ask and not to have so as an employer you are able to decline a request based on business grounds but then that refusal must be on the grounds of at least one of the eight statutory reasons that's been set out in the legislation but if we look about the look start thinking about looking at the future we could still see changes to existing rights because there is currently a flexible working bill going through parliament at the moment and this bill um, if it's passed um, it proposes to provide all workers a legal right to flexible working from day one of employment and it would require employers to include in job adverts what flexibility is available and it would also require employers to offer flexible working arrangements within their employment contracts and I think because of the pandemic, you know, it's shown that many businesses um, can work flexibly and can support that remote working. And the pandemic has impacted massively on the UK economy. So we will perhaps see developments in this area, I think. Um, and there are certainly very strong business and economical reasons uh, for why flexible and hybrid working um, should be introduced, which uh, we'll obviously come on to look at now. But first, how do we go about building that business case? And before we start looking at the evidence and linking it to the business success, I'm going to just run through some suggestions around what that business case should address. So you're, you're all probably familiar with compiling business cases. It's no different to any, um, you know, just because this is a people initiative, it's no different to any other um, business case that you're, you're compiling. And I would say gather your background information to set the context, perhaps undertake a SWOT analysis, you know, that would be a good approach. You know, it may be you find that you have high absenteeism, you may have high staff turnover, or it may be that the makeup of your workforce is that you, em you employ a high proportion of individuals with caring responsibilities. So having that context and understanding of your business is really, really helpful because it could then um, be needed to go on and form your argument for why that flexible working or hybrid working is necessary. Also think about setting out the key objectives for introducing that flexible and hybrid working. So what is it that you're trying to achieve? And link this back to your analysis. For example, you want uh, maybe a staff turnover rate of X percent. Um, you know so clearly think about the objectives and articulate what will happen as a result of introducing that flexible hybrid working and therefore why is it that the business needs it and this is where you can link in the evidence that's um, available externally which we will come on to shortly have a look at and you may even have feedback from perhaps some internal employee communications group you know this is all great feedback uh, that will help you explain what you expect to see if you introduce flexible hybrid working and explain how flexible working aligns to the business plan so your business plan may relate to the utilization of technology you might have a particular need for the coming year to promote your employer brand perhaps you're needing to or wanting to become an employer of choice in your local market you know think about then how flexible working can achieve these uh, business objectives and then of course we must not forget that actually it's how is it going to impact on the bottom line you know because 
essentially um, we want to be able to evidence and demonstrate that actually flexible working does add value to the bottom line it makes good business and economical sense so they're just some uh, pointers to think about when you're pulling together that argument for why you should introduce flexible and hybrid working so moving on to the evidence for introducing flexible working so i have researched several sources um, as i've indicated here um, and you will receive a copy of the slides after today's webinar, which will have the link to the data sources. But we've looked at the Chartered Institute of Personnel and Development, the CIPD. Um, they've, all, they've run a couple of uh, research reports. There's one also by their Flexible Working Task Force. There is the report and research by the British Chamber of Commerce the Trade Union Congress, the Office for National Statistics and the Chartered Management of Institute and, uh, and also Microsoft. So there's lots of information out there and evidence to support building that business case. And if any of you do have access to our HR knowledge base, then you can find more detail as well within our hot topic that we have produced this month. So let's look at the evidence. So from all of the um, research that I've undertaken, we know that 63% of employers plan to introduce, expand the use of hybrid working. 71% believed home working had no detrimental impact on productivity. And that 33% reported improved productivity. as well as 34 respondents said that actually it led to new ways of working and 23% felt that it developed new skills in their workforce. 46% saw an increase in employee well-being and employees are more likely to be engaged um, potentially generating 43% more revenue and improved performance by 20%. So that's magnificent there, those statistics. And then 99% believe that a flexible uh, workforce is not only vital for competitiveness, but the prospect of business investment and jobs. So there's a lot of interesting stats there that's um, coming out from all the uh, recent research. But we also have research that's been carried out by the British Chamber of Commerce, um, who've partnered with Barclays, and they published a report into the future proofing of the workforce for post-pandemic world. And the findings are based on conversations with Chamber of Commerce members across the UK and looks at the workforce challenges created by the pandemic and how then businesses expect to manage their workforces in the future. And from this, it found that um, organisations um, were looking to move to a more flexible working arrangement and felt that it would positively help evolve the workplace. There was a held view that the workplace would become more flexible in the future now that remote working is better understood. So we have gone through 18 months of actually understanding how to get to grips with it. And businesses found more skilled candidates due to flexible terms and conditions of employment. And recruiting further afield gave employers access to a wider talent pool. So clearly there is a lot of data that supports a business case for flexible and hybrid working. And we know from research that on the back of the pandemic, many employers are looking to continue and begin that flexible hybrid working on a more permanent basis. Some employees may be questioning whether there's even a need to have an office and actually, you know, operate remotely, as we've um, discussed a moment ago. And there may be some employees who may be able to support certain roles, but not all roles in the organisation due to certain business needs. But what is overridingly clear is that it can bring many benefits. So what you'll find that by introducing flexible hybrid working, you will see improved employee well-being, which in turn leads to reduced absenteeism and increased morale. You develop new skills in the workplace, which gives you greater skilled and high performing workforce. You see higher job satisfaction. So that leads to increased in discretionary effort, 
you know so if we think about home working quite often people who don't have the commute now they'll perhaps spend that time working and of course having that highly engaged workforce will lead to increased employee retention and of course diversity that massively improves because it enables you to recruit the best talent as well from a more diverse and broader talent pool which can also boost creativity all of these ultimately give greater business outcomes so you'll see improved productivity you're creating a business that's agile and is able to easily adapt to market changes you'll see lower recruitment costs and offering flexible hybrid working can make you stand out from your competitors and help you to become that employer of choice not just in your local area but now because of technology and the ability to recruit from further away you can become an employer of choice and be more competitive more nationwide so what we're going to do before we move to questions and answers is just look about look at um, how we go about introducing just at high level some of the things to be mindful of and really I guess there are many things to consider for this and I guess what I would say is that really it does depend on what you already have in place what is it you're looking to do and achieve so it may be you are happy to continue as you are but recognize with the use of technology you are now in a better position to be able to start accepting more flexible working requests which in the past may not have previously worked for you so perhaps it may be about proactively encouraging all forms of flexible and hybrid working and therefore explicitly making reference to all of this within your existing policies and your general communications with staff hybrid working though isn't necessarily suited for everybody um, and so you may be um, happy enough to just allow your flexible working policy to create that flexible working environment that you need and want for your workplace you have another approach and this is probably if you've still got most of your team who are still off site following covid and perhaps as part of your discussions about opening back up and returning to the workplace and a, and a new normal perhaps it's about having that moment that um, conversation explore with your team their preferences and then jointly agree any changes on that permanent basis on the back of that so it all could form part of your return to work discussions and finally you know there may be some businesses um, who may be looking to undertake a more radical change that would require that full and proper consultation because essentially you're looking at variation of the contract of employment seek an agreement to varying terms and conditions of employment you know are essential following that fair process is also essential in achieving this but for example when i talk about radical changes i'm probably thinking you know somebody that uh, you know businesses that are looking to now go 100 percent remote or go from a five-day working week down to a four-day working week company-wide you know they are fundamentally massive changes and so it would take a, uh, a very careful approach to managing it because you would need to consult and engage with your workers you have to get their agreement before introducing any change obviously risks associated to it from an employment law perspective become greater because you know the risk of any constructive dismissal claim because you can't force somebody to um, just force a change upon somebody um, but essentially there potentially could be a mechanism in which um, you could use to drive through those changes and I would say on that it's about formulating your business plan and your business case arguing why it's uh, beneficial for the business to move from a five day working week for example to that four day or if you're moving to a fully 100 percent remote so getting your business case is crucial um, making sure that you can clearly articulate the reasons for it how it links to your business plan the objectives what you expect to uh, see on the back of it um, because that will also help in your employees to understand and ultimately um, accept and agree to any changes that you're thinking of bringing about so um, 
we'll move on to questions and answers. It's a fairly short webinar today, but we'll move on to questions and answers. See if anything that's come through uh, while we've been on the webinar. Um, so if we had many questions. Uh, I think, excuse me, we've had a couple of questions. Um, okay. One is, is around what are the main areas of concern um, around remote working? You know, is it new staff induction? Um, what are all the challenges that might be posed? Yeah. I guess we've found the same ourselves. We've recruited um, about six staff during the lockdown period. Um, we did some of the um, inductions we managed to just start on site just before and um, and then we continued them off site and then we just developed a remote <clears throat> policy of uh, onboarding and I guess it depends on if you are moving to fully home based or whether you still operate from an office um, mm -hmm. we kind of put COVID measures in place and um, enabled a limited number of staff to attend the office um, when needed and also for some part of their induction and to meet a few other people face to face but mm. we, we did have during the one lockdown there was quite an extensive period when a new member of staff hadn't physically met anybody other than uh, the CEO I think for several weeks but mm. finally we put that right now um, so I, I guess it depends on whether you're moving permanently doesn't it to hybrid or whether you're actually still managing the ongoing recommendation to work from home and um operating between home and yeah. office and yeah exactly and what your um you know the extent of the risks you know you know you'll have done your risk assessment and covid and obviously we want uh, the advice is to go back into the workplace um but when you're onboarding somebody the first you know three months in particular are crucial are key um and so if you can incorporate that face-to-face -face interaction you know that's probably one thing and that will overcome some of the challenges because you want to get them uh, on board as quickly as possibly and as efficiently as possible and get into grips with their role and how it, their role interacts with other team members so yeah certainly um, try and think about how you can incorporate face-to-face -face interaction during that induction period um, and I suppose some of the other sorry Sue Sorry, I was just going to say, even if it's virtual, yeah, um, it's better than none. <laughs> yeah, and I suppose some other challenges perhaps um, is generally around that team cohesion. How do you maintain that team cohesion and uh, team working and the bonding? Because, you know, you're not having the water cooler conversations, are you? You're not, um, when, you're, 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 when you're working remotely, you're not getting that instinctive uh, conversation and that interaction that just occurs um, sometimes you can get some creativity can't you from that spontaneous conversations so there is an element of that that needs to be thought about so think about in your if you're moving to hybrid um, how about in your hybrid policy you commit to ensuring that team cohesion and that team working still can develop and uh, not suffer as a result um, and also I think another challenge that needs to be thought about is learning because people can gain so much learning and development just informally by being in the workplace and of course if they're not in the workplace how do you compensate them for that loss of learning so um, you know there's a lot that people can pick up and learn just by shadowing other people um, hearing conversations hearing debates so I would probably also think about how you can in your business plan then think about how you know identify the challenges and think about what you can do to mitigate against those so that when you do move to that hybrid remote working it's as seamless as possible it, it's efficient as possible um, and it still um, keeps that employee engagement as, at a high level mm. I, I, sort of going on from that um, we've had a comment about they've heard from one company in London where mainly young staff living in shared accommodation are desperate to get back into the office do yeah. we have any comments on that and I think from a mental health challenge and a practical you know can they safely work uninterrupted in the environment in which they're living um, and certainly long term that has a massive impact on the mental health and we have allowed staff to 
spend some time in the office on that basis that they need to have that um, time when they can just be not be interrupted by anything else that's going on um, and are able to do you know the um, mm. view assessment and everything else in in both environments and if it proves that actually their um, accommodation environment is not conducive to sitting correctly in front of the screen with a proper screen and equipment just, mm. you know, they haven't got the space for it then actually that's a practical reason for considering whether they should be allowed to do some work in the office or yeah. the hybrid combination that allows a bit of a balance so that they're not solidly working mm. uh, so if you remember the definitions at the beginning of hybrid um, mm. You know, the main place of work might be home, but they occasionally come in or the main place of work remains the office, but they know they're allowed to work from home every now and then. Um, and it's working. I suppose it's just understanding what your employees want as well. Um, and like Sue mm -hmm. says, not everybody uh, wants to work from home or can work from home. You know, the circumstances, personal circumstances might dictate that actually they're better off being in the office as well. So. Um, engaging with your employees and talking to them um, is ultimately fundamental I think. Um, subsequent to that should companies fix days in the office so there's more interaction when staff come in. We've gone for a mix mm -hmm. ourselves uh, we're only a relatively small company um, but um, so for us it's practical to do it but we have yeah. some staff who have fixed days some fixed all days in the office some fixed two days in the office and others that work flexibly um, we've basically responded to their individual requests because we can and we manage the numbers that are in on any one day we say to in order to enable us still to um, socially distance to a, uh, an extent within the office building we have limited it to so many in one office and so many in another office so that we can we can still support our risk assessment um mm. and our covid assessment so but around that so they just have to check in with us if they're planning on mm. coming in and we do have specific days when we'll say um does anybody want to come in today we've got a couple of the new staff coming in it'd be nice if they could meet a few people and um one or two have volunteered to come in so we've, we've done it that as well just to give that sense and in fact mm. even this week we had that and it was really nice to see uh, a number of people again um it just makes the place buzz again and everybody was yeah. gets fired up by it and it keeps them going for a few more days <laughs> um <laughs> so yeah it, it is it is um it is important um but it it's not practical for everybody and um, we do know that some organisations opening up their office has lots of other implications, such as the services that they need to reinstate and, um, you know, have it cleaned and all the rest of it. So um, that's where I think some of the challenges come because of um, whether they impose it or if, if, if everybody's kind of saying they're happy to stay at home and uh, are reluctant to come back. And there's also people have other issues that there might be um concerned about with coming back again they haven't interacted with people for a year some people mm -hmm. and they're finding it challenging the thought of mixing in in an office environment so and some people might have been um so out of touch for a while in terms of the physical building that uh, you need to do induction processes again you know this mm -hmm. is a whole there's a whole raft of um, considerations if if you're bringing back people for the first time. Um, in fact, we've written a paper on it, haven't we? Um, on the whole yeah. challenge of um, returning to work and all the things to consider. So um, those guides are available on our website to everybody. Um, just some thoughts. It's a thought paper on on things to consider about getting back up and running again, or or indeed implementing the hybrid working. Yeah. Um, so yeah, um, and I think that's also uh, another question we'd had was around uh, the implications from a legal contractual point of view, yeah. which I think we've covered off now. Um, but there are other things such as if you allow hybrid working, you need to consider where their main place of work is and therefore if there are any implications on mileage. So mm -hmm. you can stipulate, can't you, as long as you agree it, that 
um, if they are requesting to attend the office two days and stay at home for three days or whatever, then you can say, well, when you attend the office, we, we're not covering mileage costs. Because um, you wouldn't if they were attending the office fully, you know what I mean? Um, mm. So it's all those kind of considerations you need to have worked through and make sure you cover off. Yeah. So, yeah, going back to that question, hybrid working, the implications of a legal contractual point of view. I think, um, you know, I've touched on it around you've got to be careful not to risk any constructive dismissal claims. Mm. You have a legal requirement to consult and put the business case forward as to why you're proposing what you're proposing. Seek the uh, uh, feedback and uh, contribution from your team members. Um, and um before you and you know hopefully you get that agreement before you introduce um the changes um obviously if you were to just force it upon uh, an individual or a team then that's where um from a contract point of view you'll be um risking constructive dismissal claims mm. absolutely so, mm. so yes yeah, so so that's all the questions yeah mm. yeah Brilliant. I was just going to say that's why the, the importance of getting a business case all defined and <laughs> clearly articulated yeah. isn't necessary. So, mm. thank you. So, that's all the questions. Yep. Brilliant. Okay. So, let's. Move on. And before we close, we just would like to run one more poll and it's about how we can help you in your business um, if you'd like our help and it's whether you want us to contact you afterwards with um, further information on our um, areas so do you want to find out about our HR services, HR training, our HR knowledge base, health and safety services and training or payrolls so it's just if you'd like us to get in touch with you we can um, follow up after the event. Thanks. Just let that run for a minute. Okay, I think that's it yeah. now. Thank you, Sue. Hey, Close that for you. And yeah, back to you. <laughs> okay, and as always, we just like to um, bring to your attention um, training and webinar um, sessions that we've got coming up. So um, we do now run ILM Level Three um, in Leadership and Management. This will be online, and we've got our first one on the third of November, and the sessions run all the way through to the tenth of February. So if you'd like to find out more on on that, then please do uh, get in touch via the um, link below. And what you'll see is we have level five also following starting in January that takes us through all the way through to April. And this is the level five in leadership and management again online. And it's a qualification designed for project managers, department heads, um, and more senior managers ideal to develop skills and experience and improve performance and prepare for senior management responsibilities. So if you do want further information, uh, do please get in touch. We also have um, HR management and development training courses coming up, managing difficult conversations, managing poor performance and effective appraisal skills. So the first one's on the 23rd of September, which is next Thursday. So um, if you do um, want to come along or visit us online and do it, <laughs> then please get in touch with us at the link below. And we also have an employment law for line managers course on the 21st of October and our equality, inclusion and diversity training, as well as disciplinary and grievance do count towards continuing professional development. So um, we've got those in November and December. We run several health and safety training courses. We've got the next uh, mental health first aid course on the 20th of September. And then we've got a few others as well taking us through to October. So first aid at work and fire marshal.
And in terms of the webinars, then the next one for October will be family friendly and giving you an insight into all the family friendly options that we have available. And then we are in November going to talk about the menopause in the workplace and how we can manage and support employees. And um, with December, our topic is how recruitment has changed, obviously from the uh, since the pandemic. These are all free to subscribe and join up. So please um, join us for those future webinars and we'll be shortly putting a new webinar schedule out as well for the next year. If you'd like to stay in the loop and keep up to date with um, with us, then you can subscribe to our free subscribe rather to our free weekly newsletter, which will provide you with legal updates and HR and health and safety news. And you can sign up via this link. If you do have further questions, then please do get in touch. Our telephone number is on this slide, or you can get in touch via our um, inquiries email address or the uh, website that's showing on this slide. And after the webinar, we'll be uh, sending a short survey just to capture your feedback. So it would be really appreciated if you could just uh, take a few moments and complete that. And that just helps us to um, improve our services to you. And that brings us to a conclusion today. Thank you everybody for coming along and listening to the webinar. I hope you can join us in all the future webinars as well. And uh, thank you to Sue and Rebecca for supporting in running today's webinar. Have a good day, everybody, and take care. Thank you.